Hi, and welcome back. Today's episode is about the analysis of the data coming from the Titanic sinking, where we have some information uh, about the passengers and we would like to predict and classify if the person survived or not. This is the idea behind this. For that, I'm going to use the XGB uh, classifier, the uh, extreme gradient boosting classifier here in Python. And uh, I would like to show you every step before and after building the model, okay? And um, in a quick, quick way, uh, I'm not gonna show you any data exploratory analysis or data visualization analysis here, because I want to do it, as I said, a little bit quick, okay? And well, where to get the data? The data we, you can get it in Kaggle.com, it's a competition website, and you sign up in here and you can extract the data. I, well, even there's, there's, there are more data sets about Titanic uh, around the web, okay? Okay, the first step after data exploratory analysis could be feature selection. Once you have done the data visualization, data exploratory, you select the features, the attributes or variables you want to use for creating the classification. Okay, and which ones are we gonna use for this analysis? We're gonna use P class, that's the passengers class he was uh, uh, the titan Titanic uh, traveling, the Titanic travel. Okay, the sex, male or female, age, uh, quantitative variable, uh, survive, zero if the person uh, died, one if the person survived. Parts is parent and children, how many parents or children that person had in that moment. Is sips, is P, siblings and exposed. Okay, uh, any sibling in the, in the passenger liner or I suppose or, uh, with, with him or with her, okay? A P class is gonna be a quantitative variable, but meaning that one for first class, two for second, and three for third class, okay? And this, why I, I use these uh, variables? Because those are the most used uh, variables uh, when the people are working with this data set, okay? And as, as you can, explored and create a data expert analysis, you can realize why they are so used. Okay, okay. As I said, here we have the class sex, age, survive, part, sips, okay. These ones are discrete variables, parts and sips, okay. From zero to, to 10 to 11, depending how many persons are around uh, the passenger. Okay, H, sex, male and female, as I said, P class, okay. We have a category variable here, sex, P class two. However, P class is already a variable, a quantitative variable, but sex no. So we should, and we have to transform it, okay. Why? Because the um, decision trees algorithm, uh, like random four decision trees, gradient boosting, need to use or they, they work with quantitative variables only, okay? No nominal variables like this, okay? So we have to transform it, and that's the next step, encoding variables, okay? We use uh, the mapping. We map male and female to zero and one respectively, okay? And as you can see, once we have done this, we got the first 10 rows, as you can see, and we have transformed it. Uh, zero for male, one for female. For example, the first observation, the passenger was in the third class, my male, 22 years old, he didn't survive. Zero parents or two children with him, and one sibling or one of uh, his wife could be, okay? And what's the next step after encoding variables? Get rid of missing or null values, okay? That's what we call, uh, we have two, two uh, steps or two ways to deal with them. One is drop them out, as I do here, for making this analysis easier and understandable. However, you can work with 
impute, you can try to calculate what what it could be the the age of this passenger. Okay, there are many ways to do this. In other video, in future videos, we're gonna work with this. Okay, once we have done all these steps back, and now we are coming here to select which one are the, are the independent variables, the inputs. I mean, what is the output? The dependent variable is survive. Okay, that, that means we have five col uh, columns, five features as independent variables and one as dependent, dependent variable. Next steps is important for, for uh, trying to calculate the performance of the algorithm is to split the data into training and testing. Okay, and in Python we, we do it in this way using this function, train test split, x the independent variables, why the dependent variable and here for reproducing back our results we set a seat random state equal one okay and next the classifier extreme gradient boosting classifier this is a one of the superior decision trees algorithm around that's why the reason i chose it okay great performance and i'm not dealing now i'm not working with any parameter or a hyperparameter, okay? That in future videos, we're gonna try to modify this using the function grid search, Python, all right? Uh, what is the, um, the, what is XGB so superior? Because this works with boosting, okay? As we will see, what is the idea behind boosting, right? Okay. Okay, next step after calling or initially saving our model is to feed that data with our data. And here, as you can see, once we fit the training, the, uh, training set, we can see some of the parameters that the model is, well, it has calculate everything. For example, this is the boosting idea behind this. Every time he works or he built a decision tree, he's going to create another another the tree with a learning rate of 0.3. That's gonna create a new one, a better one. In the most of cases, he, this is the learning rate. He's gonna learn from his errors with this rate. Uh, how many trees? He's gonna create for improving his performance, 100 number of estimators. Here, you if you have a GPU unit, you can even change it for accelerating the process. A max depth is for the depth of the um, decision tree. Okay, the, the number of the branches, okay, the level of the branches, okay. Okay, those are the parameters. Some of the most, used, most changing parameters. Okay, and here, because we already fit our model, we can see the feature importance in this classifier. As you can see, calling the, the importance plot, we can see H is the most important variable or feature when creating the decision tree, okay? Next, SIP, P class, parts, and for the last, sex. Mm, it's important to say that with this classifying, with these parameters, this is what the model has done. If I change one of the parameters here, maybe the feature importance can change too. Okay, so it's important to say it, all right? And how to predict new, new values? That's the idea here. To, once we have created create our model, we, we, we need to, to classify new information and that's what is X, X test. Okay, you know that X test, we know the answer, but it's for measuring the performance of the algorithm. Okay, we call model is our model, we already fit, predict X test. And the first 10 predictions, gonna be zero, the person died, one survived, survived, died. For example, let's analyze what is the first observation of X test. And here we can say, okay, 
this person was in the third class, was a male, a young male in third class, no children, parent, and one um, could be his wife or a brother, okay, and he died, okay, we can see that this is one of the most cases we, uh, when we are analyzing, explore, exploring the data, is when you are a male and you are young um, and you are from the third class, that's the most probable thing that could happen to you is to, to not survive, okay? Okay, w once we have done this, we go to measure the accuracy or the performance of the model. Why? Because we wouldn't want our model to overfit. If our training accuracy is so high, but our testing accuracy is low compared to the training accuracy, we know that it's overfitting, that our model is overfitted. Okay, let's see. Using the function score, we can measure using the X train and Y train, the independent variables and dependent and dependent variable. We can see that it is a 92%. That means that in 92% of the observation, the observation of cases, the model has predict correctly that the, uh, the result. Okay. And it's important to see too the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix is a cross table between the predicted information, predicted result, and the real results, okay? A white train is going to be the rows and the predicted values, the columns. That means, for example, zero and zero, for example, here, zero was the real value and zero was the predicted value in, 90, in 298 cases, on the, on the contrary, if people survive real value and predicted by the model in 195 cases. Here, this 28 and the 14. Okay, for example, here, the person survived, there's the real value, the, the person survived. However, the model predicted that the person died. So that means that is an error, okay? Here, 14. Well, okay, in this, uh, it's important to say that this is when we call it a false negative. Okay, if we consider negative as the person died, of course. But if we want to measure or say that the person died is positive, okay, like a, like a sickness, we say this is a false positive, okay, because the, per the per person survived. And the opposite is the 14 cases, okay. Now it's important to say, okay, we have 92% in the training accuracy. Let's see how the model reacts to new data. Okay, that's the testing, testing accuracy. Here we can see, use providing new data to the model, we found around 84%. That's high, that's high because we haven't worked with the high parameters, for example. We chose the, um, the variables with using the feature selection. We didn't even see, just we chose the, the variables only. Okay, that means it's high and it's near the, our training accuracy. So we can see that the model is not overfitted. It's working well, okay? And I, also we can see that our cross table here when the confusion matrix, okay? So that is that is a fast machine learning analysis for the Titanic sinking. Okay, and what else to do? Okay, what else to do? As I mentioned in the video, one important thing could be working with the high parameters. Okay, that is uh, um, tuning the model. We call it tuning. Okay, what else? working with the missing and null variables or missing values. Uh, we could impute to have more data for training. It's important. 
the most data we have for training is the best, okay? Encoding the variables too, we can even create more variables. We call it feature engineering, okay? From what? Well, the other variables we haven't used, for example, here, I just, I, I may use only five independent variables, but also we could add more and remove some of these variables and creating new one, new, new variables, as I said. So this was an easy analysis in the Titanic dataset. I hope you like it and thumbs up.